In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create an automated sales system that can take a submission from a client in any platform and then create a unique bespoke email and subject line combining both the information about your business and the information that the client gave for you automatically. And on top of that, it will also generate a digital replica of your voice with an accompanying voice note attached to the email so that you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. This is robust, it's simple, and unbelievably effective. So if you haven't already, grab a coffee and let's jump straight in. So if I may, I want to just show you what it looks like from head to toe quickly to give you some context. And then after that, I'll show you what you need and how exactly how you do it. So where do we start? Well, we start with the trigger. In this case, it's paper form. I'm gonna say that we are creating an AI automation agency. So I built this capture on paper form with this fake name. So Ryan, Ryan Sanders, this is his email. Let's describe his dream outcome. Let's just say, hey, I wanna be a millionaire and to scale my business to have it automated. What's stopping me from achieving that? No systems, no understanding of AI, nothing. And if success was guaranteed, what would Ryan's budget be? Do you know what? I think Ryan is committed to success. So Ryan's actually going for the five to 10K mark. Then we submit it. Submission successful, awesome. Then we come back to our automation. Okay, so now we're gonna run the entire automation and see what it looks like properly. So we're gonna go for this now, use existing data. Paperform is gonna grab a submission. The first thing this does is go together and create a unique email based on everything Ryan said, based on our business, and based on the next step that we want. For the purpose of this automation, I've said, hey, he's he submitted an inquiry. I wanna get him on a 15 minute discovery call. That's what we're saying for this automation. So that bot knows all of that information and we can configure the goals, the information about our company, and everything else. But the magic is what Ryan said and what we're doing. Once that happens, it's gonna go through to this create subject GPT, training on over 100 different you know, viral headlines, it's gonna personalize against his name as well, as well as what he's actually included in the message. So that GPT takes what the email says and says, hey, well, based on the email, based on what I know about it's viral, this is what you create. Text to voice, that's then taking all the information and turned it into a voice set that we can use. Eleven Labs clone my voice, Google Drive, it's been uploaded there for storage if you want it, and now it's been drafted in the email. So if this automation went properly, when I load up Gmail now, we should have a draft message addressed to Ryan with a subject line that's pretty cool. On top of that, it should also have a voice note that sounds exactly like me. So let's over to drafts and see if we can find it there. Okay, right at the top, let's click on it. Ryan, ready to unlock million dollar growth with AI. Hey Ryan, it's great to hear from you. It's fantastic that you're, in fact, I wonder if I can just full screen this for you just because I'm gonna be on the right hand side here, aren't I? It's fantastic you're aiming to be a millionaire by taking your business to the next level. Automation is definitely a game changer. I understand, and this is so cool guys, I understand that the lack of automated systems and not having a deep understanding of AI are real challenges. That's exactly what we told them to say. This is phenomenal, but that's exactly what we can help. With your budget range of 5K to 10K, you can unlock a plethora of options at Forgotten. Forgotten was the name that I gave this fictitious agency. At this investment level, you can choose between different pathways. I'll explain that later. And what's it done? It's asked him to schedule a call. And by the way, I configured different URL links based on the price range they gave us. For more information, visit this, thanks. And then we've got this audio file. So let's listen to what it sounds like. All right, guys, so here we go. I'm gonna play it for you right now, and we're gonna to listen to what this sounds like. So I've just downloaded it. Brian, it's Jack from AI Automations with Jack. Thank you for reaching out. I understand you're looking to become a millionaire and scale your business to the next level with automation, but it seems like lack of systems and AI understanding is a challenge. I've detailed the next steps in the email, but just wanted to say, hi, also this is an AI replica of my voice. What kind of AI automation company would we be without using it? And there you go. And that's the full process. Now, I also want to call out that you can configure the voice to adjust it. I'm not sure how well it came across the microphone, but it's pretty, pretty cool, right? Now, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. But first, I need to show you what we need to start off with automation by. And hopefully now you can see the levels of possibilities this automation has. It's absolutely insane. So what do you need? The first thing you need is a trigger. I use paperform.co because you can also take payments through there if you want to. It's really, really cool. And their form building software. It's, in my opinion, from everything that I've seen, it's just one of the best form builders that integrates. So you need a trigger slash paper form. I'll put links down below for you. You also need access to platform.openai.com. If you're not familiar with how to set that up, I would encourage you to watch a video that should pop up on screen now, where I'll show you how to set all that up and get your API credits. And it's a great place to start before watching this video. So go check out the video and we'll all be waiting for you right here when you come back. Cool. So then what else do you need? So you've got your paper form, you've got your uh, GPT credits. The other thing that you need is access to Eleven Labs. I'll run through that when I go through the tutorial. Really simple. And then finally, some of those dastardly Gmail accounts. Now, I just want to say at the beginning of this video that some of you might experience some difficulties when you try to connect a personal Gmail account to an automation. 
What I would recommend that you do is create like your own domain name with Gmail. It's about $10, but honestly, it gives you access to G Drive, which means that it opens up all these different things. So you can configure with your own Gmail, but the amount of time it takes, in my personal opinion, I just think it's worth paying for $10 and getting crossed over. But in any case, if you don't wanna pay, you can still do this automation. And always guys, resources, prompts, templates, even the JSON. So you can literally come here, go more, click import blueprint, choose the file, grab the sales automation JSON, enter it, save, boom, and the entire automation pops up. And that's for every automation I do in this channel. It is all available in the school community as well as some exclusive content. But in any case, guys, I've still got you back. I'm gonna show you how to build the whole automation. And I still think it's super viable just to understand how these things connect together. So what's our kickoff? Our kickoff is paper form. And what are we waiting for the paper form, right? So paper form, new submission, which basically says, hey, when it pops up, just let us know. So you're gonna click on create a webhook. Before you do that though, we need to start off at paper form. So at the top right, you'll see create a form. So we just come to create a form here. Let's say you can pick from templates if you want to, or start from scratch. And that respect of time, we may not appreciate a five minute form build exercise, but I'll just show you briefly how it works. It's super, super easy, right? You add anything you want. On the right hand side here, you can specify, is it text, email, URL, yes, no, color picker. Pick the thing that you want, type the question that you want, you can say, is it mandatory or not by clicking this configure button here and add these things, the questions required. You can do some really cool fancy stuff in terms of conditional formatting. Like if they say yes, then show them this question. It's very, very cool like that. You can remove things by hitting the X. Yeah, remove that question. We've got text, text, email, text, text, and then multiple choice. If you do a multiple choice question, you click on the cog, come down, specify your ranges, and then done. And then on top of that, guys, you can also add payment to this. So if I click on text here, let's scroll down and we should find, if we go on price like this, connect payment account, and then you can actually have them buy things in this paper form. You could even charge people for the consultation if you wanted to, or with this service. Uh, and then briefly, just two very, very quick call outs just to give you a whistle stop tour. This little theme thing at the top, is where you change your text, um, all the colors, anything you want there. You've got typography. And on top of that, you've also got, if you come back to the editor, after submission. So you can send them emails after submission. You can even redirect them to a different page and show success in me succession metrics. And then once you've built your paper form, what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a webhook. So we click on that. Excellent, it connects very easily. This is like a really simple thing. And then you just select the form and it'll have every form that you've created on that will appear in here. So you can have different automations doing different things. And so I've selected the discovery call thing and that's just to title the form. Perfect, really, really easy. Well, let's um, let's check that it works. So we click okay. So if this is our form, how do we share it? We go on share and social and URL and that's it. And then this link here is what you basically share with people. And then you just enter it in and voila, it appears. So let's just check that it works. Okay, so let's go with Steve Balboni. Uh, a fake email address for the moment. Dream outcome, I wanna be a millionaire. We'll try it with a different prompt afterwards, but it's auto-populated just to save us some time. Budget zero to 1K, submit. Submission is successful, perfect. And if you wanna retry it, you can just refresh the page. And now we're back over here. Let's just run the whole automation once. And if it doesn't appear within just a couple of seconds, just go back over to the paper form, re-enter the information, and then click submit. What I found is in trialing sometimes, it, you know, it, the first time you're running it, you just need to submit it twice, but it does want, run perfectly after that. Great, so we've got the output. Cool, well, it should show us everything we need. So pay close attention to this, right? Come down, device, perfect. Change, let's have a look, no discount subscriptions. What we want is a data. So we've got these different things here, right? You see? So what's the top one? First name, Steve Balboni. There's his email address, there's the value for his dream outcome, those are his problems, and then at the bottom, his budget. Perfect. So the next thing to do is deploy a GPT agent. So let's click on this one here. Let's go for message and a system. Now, in my opinion, this is the beating heart of the automation, and I think where the magic happens. So we need to go and have a look at this, this assistant, essentially. So what's the email bot? Well, this email bot response to inquiries, its purpose is to take the information that Steve Barboni gives us and to understand our intention, combine those two things together with information about our business and generate a unique specified email. And this is exactly how it does that. So let's look at the role. You are a conversational human-like expert specialized in converting warm leads to the next call to action. You make users feel heard, understood, and valued. And by the way, guys and girls, you can change the purpose of the spot to whatever you want. In this automation, we're just trying to book a 15 minute conversation. So 
Instructions, using the following inputs from potential client, generate a personalized email to encourage him to sign up for a 15 minute discovery call with our AI automation agency. Reply to this prompt with the email formatted in HTML. That's gonna be key to make sure it looks good and decent when it lands in Gmail and you don't end up with those terrible, terrible emails. What I've also done, and I'll put a link down in the description for everybody on YouTube, if you wanna grab this template, uh, just look at the link down below and you can grab it. What I've done here as well, is I've specified the items you can change, as you can see. What are the inputs it's gonna get? It's gonna get his first name, his email address, the description of dream outcome, the current obstacle he's facing, and the budget that he's got, okay? Then I've entered a letter description of the theoretical services that Forgotten AI provides, blah, 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 we made it all up. And then we've got this bit about rules. Now, when you come to the rules section, I just want you to configure it. You know, this is especially helpful if, let's just say, if their budget is zero to 1,000 pounds, I want X to happen. But if they've got two to 5K, I need Z to happen. So what I've said to this, for example, is look, if they've had zero to 1,000 pounds, our automation solutions are designed for businesses ready to invest in growth with packages starting at 2K. However, we understand every business has its needs and budgets. If you're looking to explore AI and automation, it can benefit your business. We recommend starting with our consultancy services. So I said, look, if they haven't got 2K, direct them to our consultancy services. If they've got two to 5K, it's a different redirect. If it's five to 10, it's a different redirect. All of them have different you know, services that I pinned to the financial amount. And on top of that, you'll see here, look at this, right? If they're willing to spend zero to 1K, they don't get linked to a Calendly URL. But if they're spending one to 2K, they get linked to URL number two. If it's two to five, it's number three. If it's uh, five to 10, it's number four and then 10 could be number five. And if you guys have got a sales team, you can imagine like maybe you have them segmented out based on the products they're getting. So you can have a lot of fun with these rules, just basically configure it to your output. And I appreciate that was a minute to explain, but I just think it's so important so you can just grab this and start flying with it in your business. So what else do we need to say? Well, if they leave it blank or just write some nonsense like la la, the bot might say, hey, we didn't capture a good sense of what you want. If you'd like to insert the value we provide, let me know and then describe the questions again. So we're accounting for misuse of the form and sometimes that's gonna happen and we don't want our AI to start spitting out nonsense or hallucinating. So we're covering for these eventualities. We've got using common sense and be aware of people spamming information. We ask it to, and we, this is really key actually guys, start by specifying the beginning and the end of the email. That's so, so helpful so it doesn't go wild and all that sort of stuff. I've said, hey, first name. You will be provided with their first name and you wouldn't believe I had to specify this. If their name is Adam, the email would say, hey, Adam. Honestly, it was like, hey, insert first name. So that prompt is really key. As you can tell, I've had to like test this. Start the sentence with thank you for reaching out, blah, blah, blah. And then we've given it some tone of voice stuff. And then at the bottom, what have we done? Well, we've included examples of effective and viral emails. So we've got all this stuff. So what do we do then? Well, then we're gonna head over to platform.openai.com. I want you to land on assistance and then we're gonna click create at the top. And then we're gonna say, hey, what we're gonna call it? Well, we'll call it email bot. With a little emoji. And then what do we do? Well, we, you can't guess it. We just paste it all in. We come back over and we paste all the information. Guys, and that's literally it. And top tip for you, if you've got lots of documentation on your business, your services, download it all and upload it, please. Down here it says upload the files. That will give it more context, more awareness, specific to your business and make it basically like a digital AI employee for you. So now that's complete, we basically don't need to save. It does that automatically. We then come back over to make. Now we're in make, what's the message? Now, this I think is really, really important. Now guys, you'll see what I've done here. You see how we had these things here, right? Which is name, email, dream outcome, crop school, budget. Those are our inputs on our form, right? These are the five questions that we asked on the form. So we've got it in the prompt. We also want it to be here. So click on name and now let's find the name. Come down here, little tip, don't go for title you're looking for the value at the bottom, okay? You only need their first name, no need to understand his second name. Then we've got email, which is the third one we had, right? Balboni, dream outcome. What, did, what does Steve Balboni want? Well, Steve Balboni wants to be a millionaire. Well, Steve, lucky for you, this forgotten AI can definitely help. What's the current obstacle? Well, no systems or understanding. And then what's his budget, right? What did we say his budget was? Cool, perfect. And that's it, guys. And then we pick our assistant. We've selected our wonderful email bot. We click OK, and then let's run the whole automation again. And nothing's happening. Let's go back to our Discover form. I've started some information there. Let's go back in. No systems, budget, submit. Come straight back over. And paper forms found it. Excellent. And now it's messaging our GPT assistant, which is excellent. 
Uh, and this will create our email. And I always say it's best practice just to come through and change it. It's really good to rename these so it's easy to keep track of what's happening. So you can see in this one here, for example, how much easier is it to follow? Then you've got the emails and emojis, and when you build more these automations, you can look at it and say, okay, that makes perfect sense. So thank you for Stu who recommended that. I think it's an amazing tip. So this is now doing the thing in the background. Excellent, so let's check it out. Now this is going to be in HTML, so we probably shouldn't be able to make uh, much use of that. So we come down to result and look all the HTML. That looks about right to me though. Perfect. So then what do we do next? Well, next we need to get a subject line. So we click on the next thing again, come over, message an assistant. And I would say as well, like even though these are warm leads in this case, we still want a good compelling subject line. And we don't wanna have to think of new ones all the time and we could have one that works, but wouldn't it be better if we could actually specify it to the individual? And you might have guessed it. This is where our subject line bot comes into actions. His job or his, her job, the agenda neutral bot here, is to create clickable emails. So what's its role? Its role is an email headline writer bot designed to get the user to click on the email. You do not create clickbait. I wanna be so clear on that. We don't want no clickbait bot in this town, man, I'm telling you. So the context, the email is to generate a personal email too. And what I've done uh, in the sort of um, templates is I've highlighted it just so you can kind of change it easily to encourage them to write a 50 minute discovery call with our blah, blah, blah. Guidelines for great email subject lines. All these, by the way, are like trained on like what is latest and what is working and just what kills it. So the shortness is a big thing. Evoke curiosity is a big thing. I guess that's kind of like YouTube in some respects. Align it with the email content, brand and voice. Use a casual conversational tone. Emphasize the value. Avoid spam trigger words. That's just so that your emails don't end up in a spam folder. If you say free Nigerian prints or you know anything that might be associated with phishing, you can, it'll go down. And then we fed it with over 100 examples of great email subject lines. So once that's done, you repeat the same process from before, go back over to platform, we'll click on create a new one. We're gonna call this guy here, uh, subject line bot. You know, at some point, I might need to start giving them actual names. Do you know what I mean? I feel like it's a bit impersonal just calling them bots all the time. Maybe we need to start the sort of AI bot revolution. And then we just paste it in and it's all ready to go. So then we come back over to make. And on the assistant line, we just put subject line bot. And that's literally it. So then we select the assistant. Now what's really key here, because I want to reference their name in the subject line. What I found from best practices is just re-include it again from the paper form. Okay, I just found that it just seems to get it when I include it more. So we'll click on the value just so it's really clear. Hey, um, name equals this, okay? And then we're gonna give it the result from this. So it's got the information and it can just run with it, which is perfect. Then we click okay, perfect. So let's run the whole automation again. So this one's for a guy called Lewis Spencer. I've just submitted it, the paper form's found him. We're making the email. And once I've done that, we're gonna rename them so we can keep track and it makes perfect sense. Excellent, so email's done, HTML's done. And now let's just see what our subject line is like. Cool, so I've renamed them email bot, subject bot. By the way, the way you do that is right click, rename, and then you're done. Okay, cool. Oh, you can also, I should just say, you can add a note to it if you want to, like explaining it if it gets particularly complicated. Super. So what is it given as a subject line? Look at this, guys. Lewis, unlock your millionaire potential with AI. Book your discovery call. Why is it said millionaire potential? Well, because Lewis told us he wants to be a millionaire. So this bot has identified his desire and factored it into the subject line to create something unique and bespoke. I think that is amazing. I genuinely think that is unbelievable. Like, that is just so unique. You can just think of a use case with this. It's unbelievable. But what do we need to do now? So let's just summarize. We've got the top end of the funnel, pay perform, he's given us information. After that, we've created an email in HTML, combining all the beautiful stuff to get a personalized email. Then we've created a unique subject line. What we now need to do is de-pass this HTML so that we can start to think about creating a personalized voice message for him. So what do we need to do for that? We just type in HTML to text. This wonderful thing pops up. It'll ask us for the HTML that we want. Really simply, we come down and we're looking for the HTML. Perfect, okay? Then that'll give us a nice run. So what I'm gonna do is click on this. Uh, we're gonna come down to content, plus one, text, and then value. Cool, and we've got the HTML. So let's just run this down. Copy it, perfect. And then let's just run this module only. What's the result? Feed it the HTML and then go. That's just a little hack just to save his time re-entering the paper form for the gajillionth time. 
And now we've got the email. Hey Lewis, thanks for reaching out. We understand that embracing AI can seem daunting when you're starting from scratch, but you've already taken a significant first step by defining your dream of scaling your business from multiple heights. With your budget set between 1K to 2K, you have several exciting paths with Forgotten. You can dive into a targeted AI-driven campaign benefiting from our powerful lead generation content optimization tools. Alternatively, consultancy services to discuss these options, book your discovery call now, is included the link, if you're actually doing it, blah, 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 everything we specified. That is perfect. But then what do we have to do that? Well, I wanna leave this guy a personalized voice message, right? So we need to find a way of taking this information and turning it into a voice message. Now the problem is, if we just took the email, it would read like, greetings, Lewis, my name is Benjamin. I am, it wouldn't, wouldn't be right. So we need to find a way to take email speak, so to speak, and turn it into something conversational. And that's where our email to voice comes into, comes into play here. So what we're gonna say to this guy is, look, imagine you're a chatbot named email voice designed to insert desired outcome that you'd like, you just change the text, to convert emails into personalized engaging voice messages for warm outreach from an AI automation agency. Your task is to create a 70 word voice message that highlights the key points from a given email while sounding natural and friendly and conversational. Your message shall have no formatting. You must write out numbers as words, for example, 1,000 pounds, 1,000 pounds. And then what I've personally found works really well in this is to be prescriptive in what it says, but then specify like aspects of it. Think of it like a formula that it will change based on the outputs. So for example, hey, insert the name provided to you, Rob. Um, it's Jack from blah, 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 blah. Thank you for sending the question out. I see that your budget is insert budget, insert your dream outcome, insert problem statement, blah, blah, blah. And then what you want to do once you've basically done this, so I've added a bit of humor. I kind of think like with AI at the moment, you know, it, let's just acknowledge that it's an AI voice mode, okay? We're not trying to deceive anybody, we wanna be honest. And I think it adds a bit of humor that it's self-referential, just in my opinion. So then what we do is we say, look, we give it, uh, based, if you had the following data, this is what you would say. Giving an example to this AI bot is the best way to get it to be more consistent. So I said, look, if a guy's called Rob, he wants to be a millionaire, he can't control the system's business, his budget's this, this is exactly what you would say. And that's it. So we've got this. You might guess the next step. We copy it all over again, okay? We head back over to platform.ai.com. We create a new bot. We call this one email to voice. We paste it in and then we're ready to go. And then we come back over to this, and then we do, what do we do? Message and assistant. Awesome, yeah, open our connection, great. And once we've selected our email to voice thing here, guys, what we wanna do again is be specific on the things that we gave it. So you see here, right? I said, these are your inputs, name, describe your amount, problem statement, budget. In the same language, we give it the same stuff. And then we basically just assign the input to each of those things, okay? So let's start with name. Come down, data, Lewis. In fact, let me move for that. I'm just conscious just so you guys can get a really good look of everything that is happening. Cool, dream outcome. Um, annoyingly, this is like here, let me just, um, okay, cool, that'll be better for you. Cool, here we are. What's his dream outcome? I think dream outcome was number four, wasn't it? Dream outcome, problem statement. Come down here. No systems, no value understanding of AI. Budget. Wants 2K. Cool. And then we click OK. And so this leads us very nicely onto the next step, which is the sizzle and the spice. You might have guessed it. It's 11 labs. So 11 labs, click on this one here, and I'm going to create a speech synthesis. So I'm actually going to zip over now to 11 labs over here for you, okay? And create a voice clone. Now you can clone your voice regularly. However, I recommend the professional one. So if you're paying like 10 or so dollars a month for it, it lets you go to the real super voice thing, which sounds very good. So for example, I've got here some text. I've got my, I've got my voice that I made and then voice settings, okay? Now you'll see these settings on the right-hand side. You can move those around. I'm gonna do a full tutorial in the school community on how to set this up and what they all mean. Uh, but just for your time on this video, if I say, hey, how's it going on Leash and I hit generate speech, this is what it sounds like. Hey, Gay, how's it going? Unleash the power of our cutting edge technology to generate realistic, captivating speech in a wide range of languages. Crazy fry. When I actually started playing around with this, I was sending messages to my friends and they were like, they were just responding to it like it was normal. It was it was honestly ridiculous. You can obviously alter it and modulate and do different things with it. But when you're playing around with it, I recommend coming into advanced settings and moving these modules around and playing with the stability and the similarity. 
Actually, in this automation here, just to get it live for you, I've gone with some basic settings, but I'm pretty sure you can optimize this to just cover that last 10% and make it epic. So what we need to do now is give it the output, okay? So what's the text that we want? Well, we want the output from this one. To get that, we need to run the whole thing over again. Of course, we've submitted that, it's going through, and by the way, the guy's name I've submitted this is a guy called Luther, named after one of my most active spring of spinals. So we'll see how it handles this. Cool, so that's run through, but Eleven Labs hasn't fired. Why hasn't Eleven Labs fired? Well, we didn't give it a text, right? So again, we're gonna come back over here. So we're gonna pick the voice, and you'll see all these pre-made voices. If you don't wanna clone your own voice, you don't have to, right? You can just use anybody you like. Now, in terms of the model, I like the 11 Turbo V2. Um, I think it's the most comprehensive model. In fact, I think if I go over to 11 Labs, I was having at this earlier, our cutting edge turbo mode model, ideally suited for tasks demanding extremely low latency. Perfect, well, that's what we want, right? So we come back over, the text we're gonna give it is gonna be an output from we come down here a little bit. What we're looking, which bot we're looking for. And by the way, this is really cool why it's good to name them because you can actually see result. Perfect. Okay, so stability. Essentially, the lower the number is in stability, the more expressive the voice sounds and the higher, the more monotone. Basically, the recommendation that has artifacts, you know, lower it essentially is the way you want to go to it. So it's something zero and one. I'm going to try something slightly less stable. So let's go for something 0 0.4. And then we've got similarity boost, as it explains here, low values are recommended if background artifacts are presented in the speech, high enhancement boosts the overall voice clarity and target speaker similarity, very high values can produce artifacts. Well, we'd love ours to be quite similar, so let's go for 0.9, optimize streaming latency, just go with the default mode and then click OK. Awesome. Now let's run the whole automation back over again and then we should get an output from 11 labs, right? But before we do that, I just want to add it to the G Drive. Now, this is where some of you might trip a little bit when you connect G Drive. So for this, what we want to do is upload a file. The reason why it's great to get Google Drive connected in your automations is it just opens so many possibilities. What you will find if you've got a personal Gmail address is that the permissions are a complete nightmare with this. Like you have to get them through so many loops. It's possible, but if you buy your own Gmail account, it's like $10 or something. I've just found you get access to the drive and it just, the amount of time it will save you for the price point. In my opinion, I think it's very, very worth it. But essentially what you do when you, you connect it, you just open a new tab and it connects. Then you go to folder ID, select from list. My drive, new folder location. Well, it should say AI, AI voice or something like that if it's connected properly. And let's just wait for it to load. AI voice message, perfect. Now you don't need this for this automation, but it's just cool. I just wanted to include it just in case you wanted this functionality. Okay, that's great. So that's done. Then we click Okay, and then finally, what do we need? We need to connect to Gmail, right? So come down, Gmail. Now, you'll notice what I did here is create a draft, and the reason I've done that is maybe you want to review it. Maybe you want to build your confidence up to make sure it's hitting the right notes, and then all you ever do is go through a draft. Yep, that's fine, yep, that's fine, yep, that's fine. Change things if you want to. But in my opinion, based on what I've gotten with this, I think it's kind of robust enough just to fire off um, the ones that I've seen. So play that by ear and see what you think, but create a draft just gives you that extra level of just click send and you're basically done. Then we click folder. Well, what folder we want? What this will do is find every folder in your Gmail account. I'm just gonna say drafts, but you could say, hey, AI outreach drafts, right? Whatever you like. So then first of all, we grab the email address. Okay, so let's come down to the initial submission. Which one was it? And there you go, we've got the email address. The subject, well, I think we should have a bot for that, right? So let's go find our subject bot. Let's come down, perfect, it's got the result content. Now, what's key with the content, we kind of just want to make sure that we get the output from the HTML and not the message, okay? And then finally, once we've done that, we add an attachment. What attachment you say? Directly from 11 labs. That's pretty cool, right? That is really, really sweet. And by the way, guys, you can add multiple attachments with this just by clicking this button. Then we click OK. Now, if this works properly, if I hit run once after submitting, we're going to see an email drafted, personalized, and we're gonna do it all in live time. So, over to this, I filled this out for us, okay? Anderson Suntar, here's his email. What's the dream outcome? I wanna scale my dental practice to seven figures using AI within 12 months. What's stopping him doing that? He has no knowledge, he has no experience. He, oops, I know nothing about AI. I am nervous. I've added the nervous thing there. Let's see if it picks up on that nervousness. What's his budget? Well, Anderson believes in forgotten AI digital services, okay? So I think he's very confident in us and he's going for 10K. We hit submit, we come back over to make, we run this scenario, let's use the existing data, and let's watch this entire thing fold in real time. 
Pay performance picked up a submission. I, I just love pay perform. And guys, imagine if you have a payment attached to this, okay? It just goes off, the whole automation begins. It's a beautiful automation, highly configurable to your needs. Email bots now working its magic in the background. And one of the things my community asked for in particular was, they wanted lots of stuff, but really interestingly, the business automation stuff, like how you can build these systems. And I, there's just so much like value on the table, it's crazy here. Okay, subject bots working in the background, that's good. Subject box done, text pass is now complete. We've got the OpenAI creating something for its voice message on, which is great, going to 11 labs. The other cool thing you can do in this system, by the way, is you'll notice you can even change the name of the attachment when you upload it to Google Drive if you want to. So if you want to specify, for example, I want it to say X or like, hey, first name, second name, you can do that. It's really easy to do. But for the purpose of this, I've just thrown it in there as it gets started type of thing. Let's check to see if this is actual. If I go to drafts now, I should see this, okay? Let's come down, it's not there. Let's hit refresh. Is there an email to Anderson in this drafts folder? Wow. Hey Anderson, thank you for reaching out. It's great to hear from you. I understand that you want to elevate your dental practice to seven figures with AI within 12 months, but feel, but feel held back by a lack of AI knowledge and experience. It's perfectly normal to feel a little bit nervous about stepping into new technological areas. However, you are in great hands with us. That is true. Anderson's in the best hands possible. Given your budget and aspirations, we can provide a comprehensive, bespoke strategy to fully integrate AI into your business. This will not only stream your operations, but also significantly boost your client engagement, blah, blah, blah. You can explore more about the transformation opportunity here to discuss, you can tailor blah, 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 book a slot in, and we've got the MP3 attached to that. So let's click on the MP3. Okay, we've got it here. And by the way, guys, customize that email however you want. You want it long, you want it shorter, build your dream email out. So let's give it a play and see what a voice message sounds like. Hey Anderson, it's Jack from AI Automations with Jack. Thank you for sending over the questionnaire. I see that your budget is over 10,001 pounds and you're looking to scale your dental practice to seven figures using AI within 12 months, but you feel you have no knowledge or experience with AI and that makes you nervous. I've mentioned the, the next steps in the email, but just wanted to say, you know, hi, in any case, you might have noticed that this is an AI replica of my voice. Then again, what kind of AI automation company would we be without using it? And there, you, and there you go, go. I mean, who's talking now? I don't even know, really. I don't know how well this comes across on mic, but let me tell you, like, what, when I'm listening to it, it's very close. If you've made this far on the video, a small ask for me would be to drop a like and or comment down below. That just tells me that you like this kind of content, and I know what kind of content I should build more out of, and the side benefit is it really helps the channel out. But in any case, guys, I, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's a really cool automation. In any case, have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time.